for 2021, the Mazda CX-9 gets some nice upgrades on the outside and on the inside that I think you're really gonna like. You might still consider this 2021 Mazda CX-9 a high-class family hauler because of the way that it looks on the inside, the way it looks on the outside, and some of the features that you get with this Mazda. Now we're gonna take a full detailed look at everything on the outside and the inside and go for a test drive. Let's get started. Now I wanna start things off on the exterior because there are a couple changes out here, but first for 2021, Mazda actually has a brand new edition called the Carbon Edition. So if you want that sporty looking Mazda CX-9, that is the one to go for. And also I have reviewed the CX-9 before where I try to cover different trim levels and what they all get. This model is the Signature, so I'm gonna cover everything that you get with the Signature. And if you wanna see those other ones, look in the description below for those other CX-9 videos and click that thumbs up button while you're down there. So right away, one of the new things is this titanium gray grill. This is a new grill design for Mazda for the CX-9. I think it looks good. It just is something unique compared to what we've seen. You still get the chrome trim here, chrome trim down below, and this grill actually has LED lighting at night. So it looks pretty cool. It matches up with the LED headlights and those signature lights. So really cool presence at night. And these headlights are actually adaptive. And I've got a video covering exactly what those look like at night. And then right down in the corner, really tiny, they have the fog lights. And then I got that blinker on so you can see that. Now this color is a premium paint for $200 called Snowflake White Pearl Mica. And it's got a nice metallic-y flake in it. It looks good at night and during the daytime. Now one other thing that is new is the design of these wheels. So they look similar to this and other Mazdas, but these are new design 20 inch brilliant silver wheels with 255 series tires. To give this CX-9 a little bit more luxurious look, you've got the chrome lower molding at the bottom there. You've got chrome around the windows, you even have chrome up for those roof rails up there. And our mirrors do have a blinker in them. They have a nice bright blinker. They have blind spot monitoring in them, but they do not automatically dim. The mirrors do fold, which I'll show you in a little bit. I'll show you the smart key system in a little bit as well. And dimensionally, the CX-9 is rather large, if you cannot tell from here. It's about 199 inches long, which is 20 inches longer than the CX-5 and longer than some of its competitors. The CX-9 also gives you LED combination taillights. They look nice, have the same type of signature design. That chrome piece running across the back, a really sloped kind of rear end. It's pretty wide actually, and supposedly these tailpipes are actually wider and larger than they were last year. Now coming to the cargo area, for 2020, Mazda actually added the hands-free liftgate. 2021 gets that as a carryover, obviously, but that's a nice feature that Mazda didn't have that now they do have. And honestly, this is where the biggest sacrifice comes, getting the CX-9 versus other three-row vehicles. Let's go ahead and check it out. Now, as we take a look at the rest of the cargo area, this is where you're gonna sacrifice some. So the main reason is the design. So you see how much that slopes down right there. It's not quite as big and boxy coming out. So this behind the third row is only about 14 and a half cubic feet, which is big enough to fit some carry-on items and some little, little stuff like that, like my backpack and a carry-on suitcase can fit here. You just can't really stack stuff up very well. But on a side note, there is a hook like that on both sides that can work really well for you know, groceries or putting stuff down like that. Each side also gets a little lift up cargo area. So there's a little extra storage on both sides. Plus you actually get some underfloor storage as well. So there's a little bin under here, which is nice. This does also come with a temporary spare tire, but it's nice to see this extra little cubby space. And then folding this down, there's no power option at all to fold any of these seats down. You pull this handle and then you start to push that forward. The headrest automatically folds and you can see that it gets a little bit flatter right there. So these first, this first area with the third row folded is not too bad. And then you have to go to the second row to fold all of that down and you get just over 71 cubic feet combined and it's not the most practical space because of that big center armrest in the middle but if you have the bench seat you've got a decent amount of space it's just not as big as some even two row competitors and when you're all done just swipe your foot again and it will close for you so that's nice not just open but also close hands free so for mazda's key fob this is different than what it was when they first came out with it this is a nice slim key fob and the buttons are all right here on the side there's no remote start on here, but let me show you how the smart key system works. So some vehicles have sensors when you put your hand there, but Mazda uses a button right there. The mirrors will unfold. The only thing is that 
there's no button on the rear door, so the only buttons are on these two front doors. Most vehicles nowadays are starting to add that smart key entry to the back doors too, which would be nice to see. You also push that button to lock, but also one cool feature you can turn off or on is whether it will automatically lock when you walk away. So watch this. I'm gonna walk away. Once I get even just you know several feet away, it'll automatically lock and the mirror will fold. One little hang up about the CX-9 is that it doesn't have the usual entry exit system where the seat and steering wheel can automatically move when you get in or out. That doesn't mean that it's hard to get in here. It's still easy and a nice height. These three row crossover heights are very easy for anybody with mobility issues. But the coolest thing about the 2021 CX-9 is that we get new quilting and piping for our seat pattern and it really does look more luxurious. The seats look very nice. These are even actual Napa leather seats that are heated and ventilated on the signature trim. The seats are a little bit firm in my opinion, but they are very supportive. The bolstering is good, the cushioning is pretty good in most areas, and the headrest is not intrusive like some vehicles. Now a note on the firmness, it's probably because you know they're real leather seats and this doesn't have hardly any miles on it. So maybe they'll soften up a little bit, but I've been comfortable in here no matter what. Everything is in a good spot. No complaints on these seats. One note is that both sides, passenger and driver, get lumbar support. A lot of times in the mainstream three row crossovers, the passenger seat does not get adjustable lumbar support, but it does in the CX-9. Even though these seats don't have the entry exit system, they do have memory settings down here by the seat. Our steering wheel is manual adjustable, tilt and telescoping, no power adjustment available, but it's still a really good range of motion. And to top it off, the steering wheel is heated. Now when you hop into the second row, you still get the same upgrades as the front where you get the new quilting and piping on these seats. So these second row seats still look very nice. Now previously, you might have known the CX-9 as only having a bench seat. So it was a seven passenger vehicle, but now on the signature, these captain's chairs are standard with this big armrest in the middle. So this now makes it a six passenger vehicle or maybe even a four passenger vehicle if you don't use the third row seats. But these seats are also still comfortable. They actually have a nice ride height, which, or a nice high up seating position, which I think could help with some people getting uh, motion sickness. Sometimes that can be helpful to have a little bit better visibility here. We've got some cool features. So check it out. You've got a sunshade that you can hook up over here. You've got like double map pockets behind the seats. I've got good knee space, good foot space. There's LED lighting up above. We've got air conditioning vents and our own actual climate control in front of us. The center console is pretty cool. It just basically mirrors the one in front of us. It opens up either side. You've got charging ports in there. You've got a couple big cup holders here, which are better than most cup holders. And you've even got heated seats back here. So these outboard seats are heated. My only complaint is that these seats are perforated, just like ventilated seats would be, but they're not ventilated. And I've already had my daughter get crumbs inside of these ventilation holes or these perforated holes, and there's no function to them. So it's just gonna make your seats kind of messy having perforated seats back here for a family vehicle. These seats also scoot way forward and I can still sit with them in a forward position without my knees pushing into the seat. It is a little bit tight. But there's also a reclining function. So you can recline way back and get really comfortable here. One thing I would like to see though, at least optional, is a second panoramic roof or a big panoramic roof for your backseat passengers. But they don't offer it, at least as of right now. All right, so I have climbed into the third row and it's not the biggest space to be able to get in here. A child could maybe move that seat, but it is a little bit more cumbersome than some. And I just can't sit up tall back here. I'm five foot nine. And I, you probably have to be a f at least a few inches shorter than me to sit back here. So this is definitely not an adult friendly back row. Leg room is not terrible, but it's definitely not good. There are better options in this class. One nice thing is that there are cup holders and storage bins on both sides. You've got a light right here. There are charging ports on both sides, but there's no direct air conditioning vents for the third row or if you have the third row folded down and you have your fur babies or your pets or whatever in the cargo area, there's no AC vents for them. The interior for the 2021 CX-9 has a couple of new changes as well, including a larger 10 and a quarter inch screen and a different pattern aluminum on the dash, door panels, and handle bezels. Now let's take a quick look at all these interior features. So first of all, up above, you've kind of got a nice softer material along this entire door panel. Right here is nice and soft, different aluminum bezel looking kind of trim pieces. I like this big grab handle. 
We've got all automatic one touch windows, mirror controls, and the Bose sound system down there. Bottle fits in here okay, so that's nice to see. Storage bin. My only complaint is that this armrest is almost useless. I mean, it gets really skinny, and then my elbow isn't even really able to rest on there. Small complaint. You've got several buttons in here, including this one is new. It's a traction button. It's like an uphill assist traction button. Parking sensors, camera, lane keeping system, and open up your rear gate. We get push button start, foot on the brake. Got a nice graphic in the middle there. Now in here, this is a seven inch display in the middle. You have physical gauges on the left and the right, and then it's all digital in the middle. It's very basic, but it's driver oriented. It looks nice, it's crisp, it's clean, and it's clear, and it shows you all the necessities. You get automatic rain sensing windshield wipers. The steering wheel is comfortable, traditional Mazda. It's kind of got a slim grip, a little bit of bulk up here. You also have uh, full leather wrapped and it's heated, but it's only heated from here to here So if you've got larger hands or your hands cover up different parts of the steering wheel You're gonna be disappointed with that right up above Mazda gives us a head-up display It looks small right here, but it's actually good size shows you your speed even road sign assist and your blind spot indicators and lane keeping system but the big news is definitely with this ten and a quarter inch screen so when I first saw it I just I didn't even realize that it was a bigger screen but it's definitely a bigger diagonal screen it still works with its mazda command system the latest generation and it works well you've got shortcuts to go to go to your apple carplay which does work well on here i like the layout the way that everything looks and you can even have a home button for your carplay to where you actually have like your map and your music all in one area or you can totally back out and just go to regular Mazda's system. There's a lot of stuff that you can customize on here. I really like using it. Once you get used to it, it works pretty well. And if you like listening to music, you've got the Bose sound system, which is a 12 speaker system with a subwoofer. And I'll put it into reverse. Mazda gives us a 360 camera that definitely has better graphics than it used to. So you've got a backup camera, you've got that camera over there, you can even push the camera button to see different views as well. So for example, if I go into park and I push the camera button, check that out. That's kind of neat. There's more of this aluminum bezel on the dash or kind of a textured aluminum looking piece. You've got nice materials on the dash, nice materials down below. And down here, check it out. You even have genuine rose wood. So that's actual wood and there's stitching below that. The center console takes up a pretty big area. It's really wide and not the best use of space, but you've got wireless charging down here. There's a wireless charging mat right there, or you can use it as a storage bin. You've got your heated steering wheel button right there, and then you've got all your climate controls, heated and ventilated seat controls down here. I'm still not a big fan of all the shiny piano black in here, but you've got your sport mode button right there. There's no eco mode, it's just sport and normal. And then your command system, you actually control the screen with this. So you can turn the dial, you can depress the dial, you can move it left and right, volume, and then you've got audio, home, navigation, and your favorites, all shortcuts right there. Electronic parking brake and a brake hold button, all good to see, easy to use function here. You know, I thought this was a touch screen when you weren't moving, but it is definitely not a touch screen. <laughs> and does my bottle fit? Yes, it does. Big bottle, small bottle. You've got little accommodation things in here as well. My only complaint is that if you have two drinks here, or even just one, it does get in the way a little bit of your command system right here. So that can be a little bit annoying design-wise. Right over there on the passenger side, there's a 12 volt power outlet. And I like and don't like the center armrest. So it is very nice and soft. It's in a decent spot. You can't move it forward, but there's probably enough, enough uh, distance here to where you can actually rest your arm on here and on the steering wheel, but it opens up one at a time, which can be convenient for people in the back to be able to get in and you don't have to move your passenger's arm out of the way. But it's so small that it's not really practical for me to open one side and be able to get what I need out of here. So that's a little bit annoying, but you've got a char uh, two charging ports, SD card slot, and it's just a small center area for this class of a vehicle. Mazda even gives you nice trim on its glove box door handle. It is not locking, but you've got nice soft lining inside of there. 
Up here, Mazda gives you an automatic dimming rear view mirror and we have garage controls. You get a sunglass holder up there. You got LED lighting and a little bit of ambient lighting that I'll show you in the night video. Be sure to check that out because there is a little bit of lighting in here. And then you've got just one regular size sunroof slash moonroof overhead. There's no panoramic roof option at all for the back. And some of you might be curious for visibility. If we go ahead and peek out the back, it's definitely not great. You've got some big pillars back there, but let me know what you think. So to take a quick look under the hood, there's no big changes under here, but for 2021, Mazda actually gave you 10 extra pound feet of torque for a little bit of a punchier acceleration. And depending on what fuel you use, you can get up to 250 horsepower and 320 pound feet of torque still paired with their six speed automatic transmission. And we're gonna talk about how this drives in a little bit and how much power it actually really feels like. Now on this signature model, all wheel drive comes standard. You can't get front wheel drive with the signature. You can get front wheel drive with the rest of them, all wheel drive optional or all wheel drive standard here. It can tow up to 3,500 pounds, which is less than some competitors, which are at 5,000 or more pounds, but you probably won't be towing with this kind of vehicle very much anyways, but keep that in mind. And miles per gallon is not too bad. With this all wheel drive signature, 20 in the city and 26 on the highway and 23 combined, you can get up to 28 miles per gallon with the front wheel drive models. And I have not been able to do my miles per gallon highway test yet. If I get a chance to do that, I'll put that on the screen right here. Okay, let's take this CX-9 for a drive. Start it up. Now, in this test drive, I wanna give you my first impressions. I have driven this before, but it's been a while. I wanna talk about ride comfort, how it handles, what it's like to daily drive the CX-9. Now, I want you to know, first of all, a lot of their safety features come standard on the CX-9. So, like for example, we've got blind spot monitoring, we've got radar, adaptive cruise control, the lane keeping system, and I'll talk a little bit more about those in a little bit. The forward emergency braking, etc. you know, that kind of stuff. Automatic high beams, I mean, we could go on. It's got a lot of safety features. Now, first of all, first impression of the CX-9 is that it, it's a really nice vehicle to drive. It has a nice feel about the steering wheel. It's rather driver oriented, like even the gauge cluster, the, the speed actually changes where it's illuminated depending on where your needle is. So Mazda's just, they've thought a lot about the driving experience and that is what is most important to Mazda, it seems like, is the driving experience. Let's go ahead and get on it a little. So this has that two and a half liter turbo like I talked about. It's got a lot of torque. And the way that torque works is that you hear horsepower numbers all the time. Uh, this much horsepower, this much horsepower. But on a day-to-day -day driving basis, especially in town and low speeds, it's the torque that is gonna matter the most. So for example, you don't have to get onto the pedal very much. A Little bit of pedal. And you get a lot of push in the back, like a lot of quick, acceleration we'll get on it here in a little bit and i'll talk about the pros and cons of that but i still prefer a naturally aspirated engine over a turbocharged engine but i'd love to hear your comments down below because there are definite differences in the way that they feel but the steering feel of this cx9 is very nice as far as cornering and handling it is one of the best it just has a really nice feel to it mazda actually has a software that works with engine braking to help the vehicle even handle into corners a little bit better. Now, obviously a three row vehicle, that is not a priority usually, but it's nice to have. It's nice to have a good driving vehicle, especially compared to some of the floaty or wobbly type of three row vehicles that you, know, you might be used to. But the other three row competition has really caught up. As far as ride comfort goes, I have also been very impressed with the CX-9. Now I've run over some railroad tracks that are usually pretty rough, and this was surprisingly compliant. Now, I will say you feel little bumps, you know, you'll feel little bumps, like we just hit a little bump right there and it was a little more impactful than I was expecting. But some of the bigger bumps really aren't that bad. As we slow down, the brakes on here are nice. They have a good feel to them. Once you've driven this CX-9 for more than a couple of days, you're probably gonna really like it. It doesn't have the light, tossy steering that some of them have, really easy to steer, but I think you'll like the feeling that you get behind the Mazda. Now I put it in sport mode, pedal down. And 
acceleration is good but not great it's not as quick as some competitors but like i said at low speeds and city driving it does really well because it gives you power right away and handling is very good it's definitely engaging one of the most engaging three-row vehicles you can buy at this price range for sure and it's still in sport mode it's holding the rpms if you've got to pass somebody even just partial throttle there it's quick to respond highway power passing power is a little bit better with other vehicles that have more horsepower but the torque come in hand comes in handy here so I'm gonna put uh, cruise control on this does have the adaptive cruise control with the lane keeping system and Mazda's does not have a lane centering technology it is just the lane keeping so if I kind of veer over a little bit it'll vibrate the steering wheel or make a sound whatever you want and just knock me over so it's a little bit more of a ping pong type of system but the adaptive cruise works really well but like I said ride comfort is very good handling is very good acceleration is good but not great and day-to-day -day driving the torque is just nice to have I mean, it's just instant power that comes out of here. And 320 pound-feet of torque is very impressive. Now, you've probably noticed it's been really quiet in here. You can hear some of the powertrain noise, but otherwise it's really quiet. Mazda gives us laminated glass over here on the side, so you've got the double pane windows. You have nice sound absorption materials in here, and Mazda actually has improved that since they brought the CX-9 generation out. And I haven't done my decibel ratings with this particular model yet, but I'll have those listed. And in my previous experience with the CX-9, it's been very, very quiet. In fact, we're on a rough textured road right now, which usually brings in a lot of road noise. And I'm sure you can hear that, but you can still carry on a conversation in here. Even at high speeds, wind noise is really well kept. And that's part of the premium, luxurious experience that Mazda is going for. In day-to-day -day driving, the placement of everything here is not my favorite. You know, I wish that we had a little bit of a better storage, cubby, cup holder area, but everything works. I mean, it's very driver-oriented. Driving matters for this Mazda CX-9, and if that is a priority, you're going to want this over some of those other three rows. But let's go ahead and wrap things up, and I'll give you my final thoughts. So what do you think of the upgrades for this 2021 CX-9, especially that screen on the inside? It's nice to see a bigger screen because pretty much everybody nowadays is just putting a huge screen inside these vehicles. Now, aside from that, this drives really well. It's comfortable, it handles well, it just drives nice. And that's what Mazda was going for. They want you to feel connected to the car as a driver, but there is a sacrifice. You get the elegance, but you sacrifice some space especially considering how big this vehicle is but if you're willing to sacrifice those things for the niceties and the luxuriousness of the cx9 this might be the three row option for you leave your comments down below if you enjoyed this video please leave a big thumbs up down below if you didn't tap that thumbs down button twice subscribe and click the bell for weekly reviews thank you so much and have a great day